There's a lot more attention now to traumatic brain injury than there was at the time of Vietnam. And that's been, on the one hand, extremely beneficial to the evaluation and care uh, of veterans who've had some exposure to a blast, for example, where there was no obvious direct brain injury, yet they're complaining of changes and symptoms after their exposure. So the fact that there's more attention means that this can be detected potentially better. That is good. Uh, whether, in fact, all these interventions, and there are many of them, and they're coming at these vets from all different angles, whether uh, one or more of them are going to make it more beneficial for vets is unclear at the moment. So, for example, uh, when we look at the incidence of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder after Vietnam, it was fairly high at the time. That did get a lot of publicity, particularly in the 70s. And it was thought at the time that the higher incidence of PTSD was due to the bad reception people got when they came back from fighting in Vietnam. There were protests and people felt that the, the local communities didn't receive them very well. And that certainly wasn't the case in the more modern conflicts uh, that, that have taken place in Iraq and Afghanistan. And yet we still see the same rates of PTSD. So it's pretty clear that it's the combat exposure itself that's leading to this. And if you go back into history and look at World War I and World War II, uh, you can read about shell shock. You can read about distinguishing uh, shell shock that might have been due to a brain injury, a mild brain injury, from the experience of being in combat, seeing loss of life in front of you or maiming of friends and, and innocents. Uh, is traumatic and very difficult to deal with. Uh, it's not the movies. It, it, it's extraordinarily painful. And so some people have decent coping mechanisms. They don't lose the memories, but they know how to cope with it better. And other people are not prepared to cope with it very well. And often those are the people that fall into the category of having post-traumatic stress disorder. Fortunately, we have some treatments for it that are fairly effective in many of the people that report PTSD now. So there's a lot more attention to it than there was at the time of Vietnam. And there's strategies, at least in the case of PTSD, to uh, improve outcomes and treat people who have that. In the case of traumatic brain injury, with some of the symptoms we've been talking about, whether it be memory deficits or executive function problems, knowing you know, impairments in planning, impairments in decision making, these kinds of issues, or even impairments in social cognition, well, there are some treatments out there in rehabilitation medicine to try to improve memory, to manage aggressive behavior, and those are being applied. However, it's not clear how effective those are at this point in veterans who've had traumatic brain injury. So we'll have to learn from the studies that are being done now. What is true is that despite the fact that there's a lot of attention being paid and a lot more programmatic effort to treat and evaluate these soldiers, it's not clear that some of the issues are any better resolved now than they were at the time of Vietnam.